hope you can all hear me. You're welcome. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. Can someone wave to me if you can hear me? Just so that I'm sure. Yes, you can hear me. Good, good. Brilliant, brilliant. So today we're talking about moving to uh, Japan. Yes, we should call it car series. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about... <laughs> it's actually because um, of the timing. So I've just finished from work. And if I if I say I should wait till I get home, then we might not be able to do this. Um, so today we're talking about moving to Japan and how you can do it. Um, Japan is an Asian country, um, economically very buoyant. And so we'll be teaching you and discussing how and how to move. Okay. So, um, like I always say, I will leave this video on my timeline, um, on, um, Instagram so that you can watch it at any point in time. I'll also post it on YouTube so it's available. Um, I'm going to be bringing Chiroma, who's living in uh, Japan at the moment. She'll be the one talking us through her experience. Hello. Hello. How are you good doing? Good evening. <laughs> Is it good morning or good afternoon over there? Morning. It's morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So you are just about to have your bath, take your shower, brush your teeth. Meanwhile, we are already looking very tired, unfortunately. No. So um, it's good to have you here. Should I? Um, is, the, is the okay? I think the lighting is okay, but if you want to put more, do you want to put no, on no, the no, light? Okay. 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 It's okay. All right. But I, I think the lighting is okay. Um, it's good to have you on this platform. Um, so today we're not going to spend a lot of time. We're going to, you know, go directly. Um, and basically we just want to talk about Japan. So I posted on Twitter saying that people can move to Japan, blah, 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 blah. And it got a lot of, um, it got a lot, lot of, uh, publicity. Some people were saying that maybe I'm talking about, um, what's, what's trafficking and all that. But, um, I hope they get to see that this is not trafficking. This is what actually works and people can move. So let's start. I'll throw the first question to you. Um, tell us a little bit about Japan. What's the currency in Japan? What's the economy like in Japan? What's the language like in Japan? You know, when, when I hear Japan, I always think of Nakamura in football, Shinji Kagawa in football. Naruto is, is, Naruto is Japanese, is it? The, the, yeah. Yeah. Naruto is Japanese, things like that. But from, you have been in Japan now for how long? Two years, four months precisely. Two years, four months precisely. So tell us, how is Japan? How is the transport system like? What's the food like? Do you still get to eat Nigerian food in Japan or you don't have access to it? So over to you. Okay, um, first, just in case, my name is Chioma. Um, Japan is actually located in Asia and um, the currency is Japanese yen. Japanese yen is what... Hello? Hello? Yeah, I just went off for a minute. So go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, for the weather, Japan has four seasons, which is the spring, you know, summer, fall, and the winter. And winter is the coldest, but actually it varies from city to city, right? Then for summer, summer in Japan is very hot because they have a lot of humidity in their atmosphere. And when you come down to food, um, they... The staple food, I won't call it staple, but what they really like a lot here, you know, seafood, like seafood a lot. And then they like rice ball, 
green food, a lot of green food, like okra and all. And yes, it is very, very, very possible to get African food, Nigerian food. It's accessible. Not like it's in every single store you go, but it's very accessible. I, I, I had really hardly eat a lot of Japanese food, actually. Then when you come down to transport system, Japan has buses, they have cars, obviously, they have planes, they have trains. But just as an add-on, they have the bullet train and the bullet train, which is what they call Shinkansen here in Japan. The bullet train speed is comparable, you know, to flight. And in, in, in most cases, the ticket of the Shinkansen is actually even more expensive than a flight ticket because of the comfort, the speed. Um, like, it's, it's really a bullet train, right? Then when you come down to um, the culture, Japanese people are very conservative. They are very simple. That's the word. They are very simple in nature. They are very techy, but... I love the balance they try to strike between tech and tradition and their culture. There's a very, very, very healthy balance they've strike there. And I think that's basically what you've asked right about Japan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so basically you're the painting language. a picture. Sorry? The language. The language is Japanese language. Yeah. How, language how is hard is the language? On a scale of... It depends on you, but in all honesty, I'm still at the survival stage of Japanese. That's to say that you can actually still survive without Japanese in my so school. Are, you, are yeah. you saying that there are a few people, I mean, 50% of people who would be able to communicate effectively speaking in English? Yes, yes. I'm being taught in English. Okay, okay, perfect. So you've basically painted a picture for us here to say that um, Japan is a beautiful city with lovely weather, good currency, um, and I mean, it's a place anyone who's willing to go to can, can actually move to. That's what you're telling us. Now, you yes, have yes. been there for two and a half years now. How did you get to Japan from Nigeria? How did your... Uh, you passed, you know, Europe, passed Africa, passed Europe, went to Japan. Why? Why? How did you do it? Okay, I came to Japan because of graduate studies, postgraduate studies, and I came directly through MEX scholarship. I came through MEX scholarship. And firstly, I did my master's from 2018 to last year, um, to last year, up until September last year, I defended my master's. Then around October, I started PhD. So I'm currently doing my PhD still on mixed scholarship so that's how i came to japan okay and was it was it difficult for you to get here um did you did you spend a lot of money no 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 absolutely i think we'll still talk about that yeah yes, we'll, we'll, I talk, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk <laughs> about that shortly okay so um how has it been how has your experience been living in japan for this past two years I feel like I have evolved a lot. I, I get to understand people more because of how they are and how I am, right? I'm, I'm more open to a lot of things. I'm more like, and then they're hands on, they're hands on deck. If you come here, especially I came as a student, right? If you come to study, you're definitely going to live a master. If you're coming for master, you live a master like you came. They are very smart. So I've evolved intellectually. I've evolved mentally. I've evolved even in interpersonal relationships, right? You, Yeah, so I've enjoyed my stay very well. That's what I would say. I've enjoyed my stay. Okay, and sorry. Um, enjoyed... Some people are complaining about background noise from my end. Do you hear any noise at your end? No, I'm not hearing any noise. Okay, so I'm wondering why um, there's a lot of complaints about background noise from my end. Anyway, let's talk about the crux of the matter. So, how can people get to Japan if they want to migrate to Japan? Okay, there are actually five major routes I'll talk about. Five major routes five to get major to Japan. Routes to get to Japan. Yes. Okay, five. let's take them one by one. Okay, I think I'll list it first, then we'll explain it. Okay. So the first route is the first route is through education. This is where you have just a complaint of echo, but this is where you have undergraduates, you know, masters, PhD, the whole academia route, postdoc, and all that. Then the second, and then for the for the education route, for the for the education route, you know, you can either be 
self-funded or it can be fully funded, which is the scholarship. Most people are on fully funded scholarship. Now for the second category, which and um, when you come for the for the education, you're coming on student visa. Now masters here in Japan is actually two years. PhD is actually three years. Then for the second route is actually teacher's training program. Now this is basically you're a teacher, you have experience, you're qualified, you come to Japan to basically learn more about education. It's like an exchange store, like a cultural exchange store, Japan and some countries. Now this one lasts for 18 months and is actually fully funded too from the MEX, um, by the MEX Japan scholarship and all that. And the third route is actually through language school. And this is basically you saying that, oh, I want to come and learn Japanese language in Japan. So this is an intensive language course, like you're doing full-time language course, and this lasts for one year. Most people I know on these two are self-funded, right? Now, for these three, this first three I have mentioned, you're definitely going to be on student visa. Now, for the fourth route, this is coming, um, this is coming from as getting a job directly from Nigeria or directly from where you are. So this one, I can't really put a time limit to it because it differs from contract to contract, from employers to employers, right? But you're coming as, you know, coming with work visa for this one. Then for the last route, which is family. So if you have a spouse, you have a sibling, direct relationship and all that that can be proven, this kind of person is coming with a dependent visa. So if you're coming with a dependent visa, obviously the person you're going to meet should be a bit independent enough to cater for you, right? Because you will have to send like a COE, Certificate of um, Eligibility, from the immigration here, showing that, oh, you're fine, you're good, your family or your mom or whoever can come over and join you. So this is basically the five major routes of um, migrating to Japan. Okay, so okay. Let, let's, let's try and take each one <laughs> one after the other and explain. So if you're coming through the education route, how do you do it? Okay, through the education route. First, I'm going to briefly like wrap up self-funding and then talk about the scholarship, right? Now, if you're coming um, as a self-funded student, you basically have to you know, get a professor. Japan is big on getting a placement, getting a lab, getting someone who is willing to at least give you a DEX, who is willing to work with you. So you get a professor, you get admission. And most times you will now have to work maybe with the professor and the international body of the school. They will help you all the way to you know, preparing documents for visa, what you have to carry to the embassy and all that till your arrival down in Japan. And um, what, what I want to put out for self-funding is this. Now, for the self-funding um, category, what is good to know that Japan, the fun fact is all national universities in Japan have flat tuition fee, the same tuition fee. What's that? So How much is that? 535,000 yen is for per session. Per session. That's How much is in, that in Naira? Around 1.5, 1.6. It's, it's to 3 Naira. 1 yen to 3 Naira. Average. Okay. Okay. My dollar, dollar fluctuations, yes. So that's around one point something, one point five six seven range, right? Wow. And this is wow. per, and this is per session. This is per session. Now for a semester, that is two hundred and sixty nine thousand yen thereabout. But this is possible. You can pay by installment. You can pay by installment in Japan. Wow. 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 Yes. And then in addition to that, too, um, apart from the fact that you can pay by installment, let's even assume that. But first, you have to prove to the embassy, right, that you're coming to fund yourself. But then upon arrival in Japan, there is this option every semester of, especially for self-funded students, to apply for tuition waiver. Now, tuition waiver comes in four categories. You have the fully funded, like the 100% tuition waiver, that's everything is waived. I don't think I've seen someone on 100%, but it exists. Then you have the 50%. I've seen people, that one is half of the school fees is slashed for you. Then you have 25% and then you have no one, like no waiver. Now you don't get to choose which waiver you get. You just, you know, submit. You have to prove, okay, from your document, they have to ascertain that, okay, you can't really cater for yourself so much. So based on their discretion, they will now give you the waiver they feel is fit for you. So mm. 50, 100 or nothing. So it's still possible not to get, but I'll just put it out that most people I know got. Now, in addition to that, in addition to that, depending on your professor, depending on your department, depending on so many things, it's also possible for your professor to get a teaching assistant role for you. 
teaching wow. assistant program to assist um students you know marking you know supporting a professor in his class and all and these things in addition to the fact that it will add to your cv it's still adding coins to your pocket right so it's still supporting you and there. so i feel like that's really the major way for people who want to fund themselves now let's talk about max scholarship Next now you're talking thing. about japan scholarship you're definitely talking about max max is like the biggest scholarship before i go into details about max i want to put it out there max is fully funded down to the letter d it is fully funded even when you are still back at home you start feeling the breeze of the full funding what do i mean you may wonder you don't get to pay visa fee i don't i had to find out visa fee after i arrived in japan you don't get to pay visa fee and then when you're working at the and the university most times they try to they organize almost every document they tell you documents to take with you they will build my award letter down to nigeria for me they were checking everything on my, for me making sure that i don't miss any document on my behalf they booked the appointments for me wow. so my own was, my own was just to carry myself to the embassy person and submit the document and that's the first thing the second thing is actually that you get a send forth party You get an official letter from the embassy of Japan in Nigeria inviting you for a send forth party. So the send forth party is nobody is being represented. You get to meet the ambassador of Japan in Nigeria himself. You get to meet dignitaries like you get to meet professors, alumni of MEX. There was even someone who at the time wasn't yet based in Nigeria. So his family was actually um his family is was in Australia. He had gotten a job also in Australia. and then he came down for the alumni like you meet people that are probably on a normal day you may not meet you get then that is just for the send for party now they send you your flight ticket it's already booked for you your flight to japan is booked that's the one that busted my head the most they send you your flight ticket jesus <laughs> yes. your flight to japan is booked when you're done with your studies if you want to go back they give you ticket to go back to egberi <laughs> gbegbe o okay Then, uh, your flight to Japan is booked. Then on your upon I'm not finished upon your arrival when you arrive. Now because they are aware that okay you probably have culture shock or language at all. They make sure they so call a supporter. The person most times must be a bilingual. The person is paid to pick you up from the airport. Mm-hmm. Now this person is at your beck and call for 3 days. for three days this person takes you to your dormitory takes you to your department opens bank accounts with you shows you you know literally helps follows you from the airport all the preliminary things you need to balance now even the dormitory is reserved for you so it's not like you won't pay for that of course with time you get to start paying with your stipend right but this knowledge that you're going to a new country and you don't have to struggle for landlord accommodation and all. and the dormitories are fully equipped moving the dormitories are moving dormitories you have fridge you have heaters you have every single thing in the dormitories you have your toilet if you are married you can get a couples room dormitory a couples room dormitory is like a full flat is like a mini flat of some people's own are even upstairs for couples yeah. room dormitory okay okay so How 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 is it how can people benefit from this max scholarship what's the requirement Okay now the common misconception people actually have is that max is just one category max is broad but the two major categories is actually embassy recommended category and university recommended category Now for the embassy like the name implies embassy you know does the selection according to their discretion and then they you know they recommend good students to max now what does max mean max, max simply means ministry of education and tourism now this is a this is basically like the government every year has a budget they give to the ministry for scholarships so now max in their discretion the only, the only authority they have is to tell you okay this is how many students we can take this year So for the embassy recommended category um what happens is that most em- most countries that are in diplomatic ties to Japan are qualified and most african countries are on this table and nigeria especially has it now the major difference between the two categories is that for the embassy recommended most embassies operate the same 
like they do almost the same pattern of down to the selection process you submit your documents when the application flags open you know they require some documents obviously research proposal these that all those things that comes with application for admission cvs and that and if you're shortlisted after the screening of the first you know documents you come in for an exam this exam is english and japanese but yeah a lot of people get japanese and they cringe most people I know that came through embassy recommended knew little to nothing about Japanese. So we are of the opinion that the Japanese language actually is to gauge you to see if when you come, you will need to take it, a language class. But the main judging um, criteria is the English. Now, okay. after, the, um, after the exam, if you're shortlisted, you come in for an oral interview. And then after the oral interview, if you're shortlisted, they give you an award letter. This is for the embassy recommended. They give you an award letter to procure to like just for admission provincial admission and then that's it but for the university recommended category the university recommended category just like aptitude test different universities have the different patterns they want to go about it okay the only the only influence max has is to tell you that okay this is the number your school can recommend this is the number your school some universities will decide to write subject-based exam that's if you're physics you write physics some universities who like I wrote exam, I'm university recommended category, right? If you're if you're this, you're some people who just want you to submit documents, some who just want you to do an interview and that all. So the university recommended differs. So my major advice now is these two open in different times of the year. Embassy recommended opens the early time of the year, that is around April and March, April. This is different from the teacher training. So around I think March, April. Now if you really want this. What I advise people is bookmark the Embassy of Japan in Nigeria's official website. That website is gold. There is nothing you don't see on that website. You see scholarships, you see exchange programs. So many people don't know about this. You can just go there every day or you bookmark it. Now, if you feel like bookmarking it is a lot of work, follow them on Facebook, shortcuts. Like they always post things on their Facebook page. Most times, it's their Facebook page that serves as a reminder to most of us that, oh, this scholarship has started. So they officially posted that, okay, this scholarship has flagged open. So that's actually for the embassy recommended if you want that category. Now, for the university recommended, there are three ways to go about it. The first way is you have a school in mind or you have a city in mind, right? You go to that university, check the prospective student place, international student place, and follow it up from there, scholarship and all that. Different schools, like I said, have the different ways they go about it. And the second way is Google. Google is our friend. It just puts the Max University recommended. You see a lot of things, you follow up from there. And the third category is actually mailing a professor. Now, some professors have idea of scholarships that don't gain so much publicity. So when you mail a professor and the person is impressed with you, and probably you didn't get the either of these two categories of scholarship, um, the person can decide, okay, there's a scholarship I heard about. This doesn't also mean that there is always a scholarship they know about, but mailing a prospective professor is also another way. So these two ways for the embassy recommended, and then three ways for the university recommended. Wow, wow, wow. This is this is a lot. This is a lot already. Now, let me quickly ask. It's scattered in my brain now, but let me just ask. While you're studying, can you work? Yes, yes, you can work. And how many hours can you work while you're studying? Um, part-time, they, they start your part-time for you, 28 hours per week. 28 hours per week. Okay, okay. Now, what about employment? If people want to come to Japan from the employment route, is there websites people can check for jobs? Is there, are there places people can check for jobs if they want to come to the, uh, I mean, employment route? Yes, yes, actually. Now, in of course, we know LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a popular one where you streamline. If you want Japan, you streamline to Japan. We know Indeed. Indeed is another big website. You streamline, you know, want jobs. But if you're specific about Japan, so one other website I will suggest is Gaijin Pods. Now, in Japan, Gaijin How do you means spell that? Gaijin, Gaijin. Yeah, Gaijin, yeah, foreigners. How do you G spell that? G A I J I N. Okay, Gaijin, Gaijin Pots, is it? Yeah, Gaijin Pots. Okay. Yes. 
So guys, before I go on, let me say these things. This is Chiroma. You can ask her any questions about Japan on Instagram. C H E E R O M E. C H E E R O M E. You can send her messages. You respond. On Twitter is Kylometric. C H I L O M E T R I C. C H I L O M E T R I C. Just send that question. She also has her own YouTube channel. It's、um, Chilo Talks. C H I L O Talks. And you can bombard her with DM. She will answer you about anything Japan. So you've told us now that you can come in through the educational route. You can come in through with your family. You can come in with with employment. Awesome. And there are scholarships available that you told us about. Yeah. Then for the language school. Yeah. If you yeah, if you want to come through language school, it's Google. Like you have to use Google a lot for that one because most times it's、um, self-funded. And、okay. another advice could be also another advice could also be the the official website I talked about. They sometimes advertise you know language school exchange programs on the official website of Japan, the Embassy of Japan in Nigeria. So、oh. that's another. That's another angle. And then you guys, all these all these people, even dependent visa has the whole twenty eight hours per week. Every all these people have the whole twenty eight hours per week. So、guys, then, just send that DM. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to our channel. Ask that question. Question. We will answer you. Okay. Um. So, is there any form of racism in Japan? I hear this, and I la- personally I haven't experienced racism, and I don't want to attribute it to the fact that I'm in the educational system,、um, like I'm in the institution. What I would say is, what you will most likely experience is curiosity, curious minds, inquisitiveness, right? Japan is one of the most homogeneous countries in the world, meaning that you don't find too many of too many countries, right? You see handpicked here and there. So when they see you wear, like I like to wear Ankara some days, and they see you wear Ankara, they're inquisitive, like, oh, it's colorful. What's it called? You know, which particular place? So we even tell you which place in Nigeria. Show me in the map. They want to touch your hair. They want to see how you look. So it's basically from the angle of just being cross. Instead of me saying I have experienced racism, I would rather say that my color has made me to be helped several times. So I go to a place. Example: Last year, I traveled somewhere solo trip, and I got down. You know those trips where you just go on your own. I got down, and you see people. When once they notice that you're confused, some people walk up to you like they feel like you're just lost. This is a foreigner. You know? And they want to help you. They are very helpful. They are shy, yes, but they are very helpful. Okay. I've not experienced any form of racism. Okay, but one more thing before I let you go, tell me about African food very well. Are you sure we can get African food in Japan? In my fridge now. I don't have any Japanese food in my fridge. Do you want、I、to、cook. show us your fridge? Do you want to show us? No, no, no. It's just for you to have. <laughs> but you know, you can. You ask now. You have I said most times you see some of the things that you're familiar with in like Indian stores. Some other times you see it in the Japanese stores because things like okra, they eat okra, they eat okra. Things like kokoyam, they eat kokoyam. They may not cook it the way you cook it, but you see these things. You know how you you want to cook it, and you use it the way you want to use it. Now some other times you see you see banga, you see ofaku, you see、um, smoked fish. What's the thing that、wow. we are asking about? Don't have They are saying、yeah. you should speak a little bit of Japanese. Can you can you just speak a bit of Japanese? Nihongo, just to have a chance. What does that mean? What does that mean? My Japanese is not good. Nihongo, just to have a chance. What does that mean? What does that mean? My Japanese is very small. <laughs> okay, so that has been Chimura,、uh, Chiroma, guys. Now,、um, like I said, she's spoken about、um, migration to. Um, Japan. She told us that Japan is a very homogeneous、um, country. It's a very fantastic place to be.、Um, the weather is good. The economy is good. It's a very lively place. She told us that you have five ways for which you can move into Japan: the academic route,、um, the language、um, route, the employment route. You can come to your family, and you can come to the next. Scholarship. She went ahead to list all the forms of scholarship. You don't have to pay your flight. They will take care of your flight going to Japan. No visa fee. 
you're basically just getting a scholarship, packing your bags and going to Japan just like that. Guys, I need you to find her on Instagram. It's Chiroma, C-H-E-E-R-O-M-A on Instagram. On Twitter, it is Kylometric, C-H-I-L-O-M-E-T-R-I-C. Just send that question. She also has a YouTube channel that discusses everything Japan. So please send her DMs, bombard her, she will answer you. You have to go to Japan this year. I mean, you don't need to spend anything. Even if you want to spend money on your own, it's only 1.5 million per session, you know, for masters. Now, another thing I need to ask, is there citizenship? Is there, is there any chance of citizenship? Japan is not so big on dual citizenship. It's like they are right, better right, right? Okay. But PR, PR is more, you know, PR, is yeah. more... Okay, yeah. so you can PR. get PR. How yes. many years um, of residence do you get when you finish your studies? It differs. I've seen people that had six months, one year, three months. I really don't know how they do it. But the fun part about Japan is this. Um, both Japanese and foreigners, one year before your graduation is called job hunting. You okay. can job hunt, you can freestyle. So most times, most of my friends, or most foreigners I know, before graduation, they have the job because it's one year, one whole year of searching for jobs. Another another hack people don't know is when you join like bodies like Nigerian Association, African Association, you actually leverage on the shoulders of those who have been here for several years, 30 mm. years, 25 years, and they help you get a job or they tell you where you can. I, ha I knew someone who finished, he went back to Ghana and then the association brought him back to Japan. Wow. So, wow. 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 So, yeah. Okay, I think we've come to the end of it. Is there any information you want to pass across that I haven't asked you or mentioned? Yeah, I'm just the teacher's training program. It's currently going on, guys. If you're a teacher and you're interested in the 18-month teacher's training program, it's still a max scholarship. So basic you basically still have the same benefits like the the main max scholarship flight you know dormitory and all that so if you're a teacher and you have all the criteria they listed all the criteria in their flyer you can also check my pinned tweet on twitter you can check my youtube channel i interviewed um a teacher here in japan that is currently on the scholarship you can also ask questions if you have but if you are open to this please go for it the deadline is february 12th which is already closed all right Thank you very much, Chiroma. Um, the DMs will start coming. Thank you for being a guest. I hope we can do this shortly again. Thank you very All much. Right. All right. Thank you. How very... do you say bye bye in Japan? Sayonara. Okay, sayonara. Take care of yourself. <laughs> All right. Bye. bye. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, now hold.